the dispatch newspaper and uh, uncle ben has sent it to me on on my phone so i'll share it with you it reads that basic schools in savannah region disinfected also dealing with the pain and anger in mpp the chief of staff heads npp's conflict resolution committee the ndc will respect verdict of supreme court on voters register john mahama has declared the publisher newspaper 2020 polls reagan plot laughable dr sribo kwaku is the um, the director of electoral services of the electoral commission mpp primaries defeated mps snob parliament and uh, yesterday we had a conversation with the speaker uh, the speaker up the leader of uh, the majority and he says that well he's been trying to talk to them to finish uh, their work and finish hard men shall not united for victory ndc killer apostle freed he's been granted bill apostle uwusue j has been granted bill we're told the bnft loopholes in revenue management remain large piak report pressure pushes banks to tighten credit to businesses and debt forgiveness would hurt bond market and make africa unattractive the Ghanaian times 200 million dollars boost for cocoa production as cocoa board secures loan for productivity enhancement program ensures strict adherence to covid 19 safety protocols president tax heads of basic schools government undertakes disinfection exercise for 112 basic schools in savannah region and the finance ministry fails to account for abfa for third time according to the piac and the daily graphic tuc boss edits daily graphic today he's the guest editor Provide roadmap on pollution control. Dr. Professor Frimpong Boating demands of steel company. He is the Minister for Environment, by the way. Government engaging police on nose mask enforcement. Compilation of the 2020 voters register. Electoral Commission has a special in there. And there's also a special supplement on banking in Thursday's uh, issue that will come at you tomorrow. So look out for it. Cocoa Board receives $200 million to fund productivity. Finally, the Daily Guide newspaper. It says two envoys bid farewell to Nana. Supreme Court dismisses Giba suit and Mahama beats retreat on new register. NDC we apostle free on um, 100,000 Ghana cities bill. My guest this morning is the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency for the good people uh, up there. Alaji Suhini is my guest. We'll, we don't have an MPP rep yet. When we do, we'll let, uh, we'll let him or her have a seat and then ventilate the issues as well. Alaji, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Perfect. Alhamdulillah. I hope you are well too. I am alive. Uh, I'm just worried about the increasing fuel prices. But let, let's start off. Um, you, you drove in your car with your mask on this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning and sometimes you don't know which one to even worry more about. Mm. Because, uh, yes, you are right. I had to check my fuel gauge a couple of times mm. this morning uh, as I related the uh, uh, level to how much more I'll need to, you know, uh, pay for fuel. Mm. And also uh, that an ending discussion over whether or not um, people should wear their mask mm. when even they are in their private cars. I don't think it makes sense at all. And so I agree with lawyers like Martin Pebu who think that it is uh, irrational. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Honorable uh, Inusa Fuseni even thinks that it is uh, unlawful for mm -hmm. the president to have uh, prescribed you know, uh, sanctions, mm. uh, because according to his uh, assertion, uh, the law as it was passed by parliament does not, you know, give the president power to uh, uh, legislate or seek to legislate as mm. he did mm. in that announcement. So uh, I think that uh, there, there's a need for that law to be reviewed. Mm. Globally, globally, many uh, people are beginning to discuss how um, uh, for COVID, many governments are becoming dictatorial. Mm. It is a global discussion, and I think that Ghana should not be left out. That is why some of us were of the view that we did not need EI uh, you know, 64, 64 in the first place. Why, why be not? Because of the health, the Public Health Act, mm. uh, Act 851. Mm. Uh, some of us were of the view that that act uh, uh, has enough provisions in it for us to have dealt with COVID you know, which is a communicable disease. Mm -hmm. And the act anticipated uh, almost all the things that we are having to have to deal with mm -hmm. COVID. And maybe that is why laws are passed. But instead of us testing the law on COVID, mm -hmm. we sought to uh, expand the powers of the president with EI-64, 
which has made us, uh, you know, uh, part of the countries that are watched closely globally mm. as a result of governments using uh, COVID mm. as a reason to increase executive powers. And many people around the world, especially lovers of democracy, mm. are beginning to worry. For example, uh, I think in Hungary, mm -hmm. there is that discussion over, uh, you know, a legislation that suggests, for example, that people can be arrested mm -hmm. for uh, publishing uh, uh, what is considered uh, false news mm -hmm. about COVID to increase panic. Mm -hmm. And guess what? In EI 64, uh, our government or our president has that power also here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so I'm surprised that we 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 are not having such a discussion desperate also in Ghana. Perhaps, calls for desperate measures. perhaps perhaps it's because maybe the government is not minded mm. uh, to 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 extensively apply uh, the law. Because, for example, uh, if you look at the way it is carved, recently the Occupy Ghana came out to question the number of deaths as right. far as. Mm. Uh, the, the 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 Ghana Health Service reports are concerned. The, the Ghana Health Service says the Okuba Ghana cannot be right and, because and, they are not massaging figures. And I'm telling you, under the EI 64, mm. Okuba Ghana could have been rounded up for publishing false news, and that is why people are worried about how governments are using COVID to become dictatorial. Mm. You know, so it it was some of these things that gave some of us the. The, the impression that we didn't need ER64 but, but it came to parliament. at the time that we it, did. It, yes, it I came mean, to parliament. Yes, we, 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 we express our views, but mm. like they always say, the minority will have its say and the majority will have its way. We, some of, most of us thought mm. that, indeed, we should have tried using the Public Health Act mm. first if we, uh, after the implementation of the Public Health Act, thought that there was a need mm. for us to extend the president's powers, mm. then we'd, we, we, we would have done but, so. But not to jump straight to EI Exactly. And you see, even when the president addressed the nation, I think the first time, mm. uh, on COVID, mm. uh, his attention was on EI, uh, I mean, on the Public Health Act. He directed the health minister, for example, to mm. ensure that, uh, you know, the necessary enactments were done mm -hmm. to enable him as minister of health mm. to deal with COVID. But... Immediately after that address, mm -hmm. the Public Health Act was put on the back burner for some other extensive powers to be given the president in EI 64. Mm -hmm. But, well, I think that um, this directive, I mean, the implementation of, of, of the directive to wear uh, masks given mm -hmm. in private mm -hmm. cars is giving us the opportunity to re-examine mm -hmm. EI 64. And I am happy that we are we are all having this discussion. Well, so as part of the, the EI also, the question of um, social distancing comes in. Yeah. Now, I have been worried, and I started a campaign sometime last week, about how you get to these bus terminals, um, intercity bus terminals, and I'm sure most of your constituents will come in mm. to Accra, Kumasi, and go back. Mm. You get to the bus terminals, you are allowed to socially distance. In fact, they insist that in the queue, mm onto the bus, you socially distance, mm. you wash your hands, you have your face mask on, mm. and we have observed the protocols. Mm. But as soon as they get onto the bus, mm. everything is thrown to the dogs. Mm. They are either just wearing the mask or mm. some are not wearing the mask, mm. and they are sitting closer together. Mm. No regard for social distancing, because if there are three seats, two people are seated on one side, mm. and there's space in between, one person seated there, the two persons are not observing social distancing. Mm. Short trusts are observing social distancing. Taxis are observing social distancing. Why can't the buses? Well, uh, you see, Johnny, we have, uh, and I agree on this score with the flag bearer of the NDC that handled COVID in a very chaotic manner in this mm -hmm. country. From the beginning, it's been chaotic. I mean, no plan, no careful uh, you know, thinking through interventions that are made. Uh, education is chaotic. Mm. Every move that we have made has ended up, in my view, you know, uh, worsening the situation. That, that's an that unfair, is why that's an unfair assessment. No, of no, them. no. They, Johnny, have, they clearly have done some things that Johnny, are okay. Johnny, Johnny, let's be fair. The 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 the, the success 
of a decision mm. is as is, is, is measured by the results that it gives you. Not so. Mm. What is our results? Our result is the, the picture that you paint you painted. Mm. General observation of the protocols required mm. is poor. Poor. Everywhere. You also have infection rates going up. Case counts going up. And the evidence of the chaotic implementation of almost all the decisions. You see, sometimes the decisions can be good. Mm. And they can be announced with flowery language. Very beautiful decisions announced with flowery language. Mm. But if in the end, because there was no careful thinking through it, the implementation is flawed and the results is not Appreciate well, you don't have to say because the implementing agencies, be, because for example, you don't have case, to say because the, the announcement MT, was the, sweet. The MTTD must go out there and make sure this works. The bus companies themselves, including the state owned bus companies, must be responsible enough to ensure that this is done. I mean, if the trotters are losing out, taxes are losing out, why can't they break their backs? So, the president has given the order, yeah. And everybody is supposed to fall in line with. Yeah. You don't expect the president to come from the Jubilee House I don't. to the bus station. I don't. So we must blame the implementing agencies. We must. But you see, sometimes you should not also ignore the posturing of even the people at the top, the mm. presidency, the executive. Because it has an impact mm. on social behavior mm. and how, you know, that's that 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 affects whatever implementation plan that has been put out there you remember mm -hmm. on this same platform mm -hmm. i talked about how i feel it is reckless for our government to begin to say this is a disease we have to live with i remember you remember mm -hmm. because you see when you do that you give people the impression that you know this is like malaria when honestly this is not because the world is still struggling to understand this the world is yet to get a full understanding of how this works. So mm. you don't give people the impression that they have to learn how to live with it and survive with it because mm. it's going to be here for a long time. So when you have executive, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, the executive, people in authority, and that's why people say when the fish is getting rotten, it starts from the head. When you have people in authority who mm. are supposed to let us, you know, obey some of these things, mm -hmm. give us the impression as if there's really nothing at stake. It's difficult for me to isolate. I'm not saying they don't deserve blame. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for me to isolate those who are the implementers at the, at the grassroots mm -hmm. for exclusive blame. I, I think that we must understand that from the beginning, mm -hmm. we have not handled this well. Mm -hmm. It is sad that we are where we are. Okay. And I am hoping that, you know, <clears throat> beyond individual responsibility, mm -hmm our authorities will begin to realize that lives are more important than just elections. I've said it somewhere. I mean, I understand the unique position that we find ourselves in. It's not every country that is dealing with this in an election year. Mm. We have had to deal with it in an election year. And I can understand why people in authority will be making the choices between what is politically expedient mm. and what is life-saving. The president was clear that he knows how to bring the economy back, not their lives. And so far, they insist and appointees of the government and spokespersons of the government insist that that's what they are doing. They are not endangering the lives of the people. That's why they will insist that you must wear your nose mask and you must not have more than 100 people in the church or 25% of the quantum of the space that they will take. And all of those protocols, wear your mask in your car. What else could we be asking for? It's, you see, Johnny, again, I've told you that it's not just about how beautiful the idea sounds or how well it is presented. Mm. It is the actions. So the addresses, mm. the, the, the announcements, how are they matched by the implementations on the ground? Okay. For example, when you come out and say you will pay contact traces 150 Ghana cities, mm. isn't that beautiful? Only for the contact traces to be paid 70 Ghana cities without explanation. And because of that, they are not willing to work. So you see that the announcement is beautiful. Mm. The implementation is poor. When you come out and talk about frontline workers mm. and the benefits they will get, 
and the definition of frontline workers becomes a problem. The announcement is beautiful. The implementation is poor. When you say you will feed people in lockdown areas mm. one hot meal a day, and then you vote 40 million Ghana cities for it, mm. and you, the media, go to the ground, and you find out that the people are not being fed as suggested, and even where they are fed, mm. or the attempt is made to feed them, it is chaotic, as you reported. Mm. Protocols not observed. People who are fed are... Are, are, are done on party lines, mm. as you reported, then, again, the speech doesn't match the implementation. Mm. When you say you will provide water mm. to lockdown areas and vote over 40 million Ghana cities for that purpose, including grains, food uh, uh, items, and then it doesn't match the implementation, it, th then you have a problem. So let's not always dwell on what the executive says mm. and end it there as if what they say is a, a reason why there shouldn't be any criticism. What should the president be saying must... now at this point? So you are giving me a list of the things that have been said which are not being implemented. I have my bias towards what's happening at the bus terminals now. Yeah. Because just yesterday I had somebody travel in to Accra and the person had to insist on buying two seats Yeah. because... That person wanted to observe social distancing. Yeah. On the Ayalolo bus as well, somebody says, I paid for two seats because when I complain about it, even the folks in the bus who should have joined me to campaign and say that, let's socially distance, they were calling the person to know. So yeah. the person had to pay for two seats. Yeah. Same in the VVIP bus, two yeah. seats. What should the president be saying now? Well, so you see, that's the point I made earlier. We are where we are because of how we have handled this situation. But, but as people who should also be responsible for our lives, mm. sometimes I will urge and, and hope that it will be taken seriously that we do not get influenced negatively by the nonchalance or lackadaisical attitude mm. of our executive. This is a matter that affects us personally. Mm. And... Maybe it may sound irresponsible, but that is what the president has told us to do. Mm. Our lives is in our own hands, even though I think that it is correct, mm. but it does not exclude or preclude the state mm. from also playing its responsible role. And I think over the period, the state has failed. Mm. But us as individuals, we shouldn't fail. So if you are a transport manager, mm -hmm. a union manager, or a passenger, like mm -hmm. your friends who offered to do the correct thing, right. let us all ensure that the individual responsibility that we have to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, 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 the individual responsibility that we have to exhibit, mm -hmm. we do so, so that we can save our own lives and the lives of the people that we, we cherish. Okay. But clearly... Clearly, I am saying that we are at a situation where majority of people are beginning to, in fact, are doubting even the existence of COVID mm. and are doubting the figures of recoveries. Even though people are being buried. That's what I'm saying. But, but you see, it, we it, are bringing the reports to them. That's what I'm saying. But you see, we are in that situation because of how, as a state, we have handled all of this. Our authorities have handled all of this. Should the communication change? Obviously, it must change. You see, I have said it again on this platform that my problem with how the state have handled this is that it seems to me mm. that from day one, our president and his handlers mm. saw this as a communication problem and not a health crisis, a PR problem mm. that can be resolved by grandstanding and propaganda. Mm. They did not see it as a health crisis that affected lives and had the potential of, you know, affecting almost everything. For them, from the beginning, mm -hmm. it was as if they can communicate this away, they can, you know, uh, engage in PR and grandstanding, mm -hmm. and all of this will just go away. Okay. Join us uh, via social media platforms, WhatsApp, uh, the numbers are on your screen, and on Twitter, the hashtag is tv 3 New Day. It's uh, half past seven. We still do not have an MPP rep here. We always provide... 
an avenue for both parties to be present. So as and when we get the MPP representative, we will afford him or her chair and hear him out or her out as well. But the uh, publisher newspaper is talking about the fact that the defeated MPs have snubbed parliament. Of course, uh, somebody will say they are in pain and that could possibly affect the work of parliament. So have you seen your colleagues on the other side who, uh, who lost at their primaries? 40 of them uh, have lost. The minority insists that it is, majority insists that it is not really uh, too big because they have had 2016, 20, 2004, the same situations, and they have even won by a larger margin. Let's look first at they are, they, they are being in parliament. Have you seen them? Well, um, yesterday I didn't see many of them. Um, I saw uh, a colleague later in the evening, mm. but not in Parliament. Uh, we were together in another studio. Okay. So I've not seen many of them, but I uh, can understand why um, they were not in Parliament yesterday. What do you understand? Uh, some of them are yet to return from their constituencies, mm. even though uh, they lost. Uh, I am sure that even if not for themselves, they will still be required to uh, stay in their constituency to console a few of their supporters. Who, mm -hmm. and, and those who are minded to help, you know, men fences for the party in their constituency may still also want to stay back mm -hmm. uh, to do uh, that. Mm -hmm. So it was only uh, the first day mm -hmm of parliament after the primaries over the weekend. So you can understand why some of them were not there. But I'm sure that this week many of them will be there. But I feel very sorry for them, John. Why, why feel, do you feel sorry for them? I why, feel, why do you want to cry more than the bereaved? I feel they have been scapegoated. Oh. I feel many of them were punished because of the very poor, shambolic, and chaotic performance of Nana Kufuado and Dr. Baumia. How do you mean? You see, at the constituency level, mm. many of the people who lost, lost because the people who are NPP people are holding them responsible for not improving situations and conditions in the constituency. But really, Johnny, what can an MP with his opportunities and resources mm dramatically do in a constituency without the support of central government. So for example, if the Nana Akufuado Dr. Baumia government was actually sending one million dollars to every constituency, mm -hmm. that would have been about 20 million Ghana cities today. What wouldn't it have been able to do for the constituency? Clinics, roads, water systems. Mm. You remember Dr. Mahmoud Baumia said in 18 months, with the $1 million per constituency, they were going to ensure that every village and every community that had water problem mm. and toilet problem will be resolved. We are in the fourth year. So can you imagine if actually every constituency received 20 million Ghana cities? Do you think these people would have lost their seats the way they did? They wouldn't have. Are you blaming at least, on them? Look. At least, at least, at as least. As an MP, you also have a responsibility. I know. To be interacting with your people. Like I know. And listening to them. I Some know. of them didn't. I know. But I'm telling you that around the world, and it's a fact, mm. everywhere in the world, it is central government that leads in development. Any other person, be it an MP or an NGO, is mm. just supporting. So when you have central government, make... Mm specific promises mm. of how to transform the lives of the people. And the people vote expecting that transformation. Mm. And it does not come in the constituencies. The, and the people unfortunately vent their anger on the poor MP who was just supposed to support. It is safe for me to say they have been scapegoated. But this is an for internal example, contest. Johnny, this yes. is an internal contest. So it's not about an external thing where the people are asking what the MP has done. That, it's an internal contest that, where they think they have to put their best foot forward. No, no. You see, this is an... In, that, and that is what makes it even more disturbing. It should make it more disturbing for the MPP. This is an internal contest. And even members of the MPP are saying their representatives have failed them 
in they have failed in transforming the constituency. It does appear that money exchange hands in many of the cases. So again, so again, so that's... again, Johnny, that makes that that is also an interesting thing to note. You know, this government has been accused of running a very close network of people who are benefiting from the government. A clannish kind of thing. Very close, and not everybody in MPP is actually benefiting. Look at it. It's reflected in the, in the victories. Not the people who won. The CEOs, mm. the chief of staffs, and the people said to be close to the president. They won. It was a contest. So, so, so you see, it reflects... It was a fair contest. Was it? Was Go it and not? say that to Ochim Abwaji. That it was a fair contest. Go and say that to my friend Redwan. Who won in primaries against somebody in 2015. 2016. Won the seat for the first time for the MPP. Only for the person who he defeated in primaries to be made a deputy regional minister. And so from day one, when the person was made a deputy regional minister, the person started undermining him and he lost. Go and tell him it, is safe. it was fair. Go and tell Kofiada mm. that bringing back an ambassador to become regional minister to begin to contest him was fair. Go and tell, go and tell Asibi Yabua. Mm. Go and tell Asibi Yabua, the chairman of the Asibi finance committee. Yeah, chairman of Asibi Yabua. That to have a president visit your region mm. and have lunch in your opponent's house made the ground fair. So I'm telling you that even when you talk about the money that exchange hands, who are those who had the money? And yes, the money is an issue. The unprecedented levels of monocracy that we saw is an issue. Both of you but do even Both that, NDC and IPP does that. That's why I stress you the levels. Share. That's why I stress the levels. Okay. The levels we haven't seen before. 4,000 Ghana cities, $1,000. We haven't seen before. We haven't seen before. So, yes, the money is an issue that all political parties have been dealing with. But why does it seem to me, and it should be a worry for all of us, it, that the NPP always seems to make it worse? It doesn't mean that you have a firm grip on the elections that are coming up because the, minor, the majority still insists that this is just an internal contest. It, doesn't, it should not give you any hope. Uh, yesterday, I spoke with the majority leader. He says, uh, in 20, uh, 2004, mm -hmm. similar thing happened. 2016 happened, even in 2012, mm -hmm. where new faces came in mm -hmm. and you were all jubilating, but they, they trumped you at all those on, in all those elections. So don't be too excited. You see, I haven't even gotten to a point where I am discussing what it means to the NDC. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't say anything. Well, but about... I've heard some members of your party say that. Well, but the point I am making here is that I am sorry for those who lost because okay. I think they have been scapegoated for the poor performance of Nana Akufuado and Dr. Baumi. If, if by extension, the, you, the you point are claiming that they have been scapegoated because there's been poor performance, yeah. the people of Ghana will make that verdict on the 7th of December. Yeah. And I'm saying that already some members of your party are excited mm -hmm. about this analogy and mm -hmm. the conclusion. Mm -hmm. And the ma majority is saying that you shouldn't be happy about it mm -hmm. because this is not the first time. So... What you call the poor performance mm -hmm. is not necessarily poor performance. It's mm -hmm. just an internal contest that they chose to put their best foot forward. What you do you see, say? You are forcing me to speak about the happiness or the excitement of some other people because I have not expressed the same happiness. But they are members platform. of your party. Well, but I, don't, I will not know how my, the mem every member of my party is influenced to be happy or sad. Do you think, but, do you but, think that this but, will affect but, the December but, but you see, do you think that this will obviously, the obviously, but it's not about whether it's it, it is going to make the NDC excited or not. What I know mm. is that if you were looking for evidence mm -hmm. of disappointment, disappointment mm. of, of, as far as the, the Nana Kufuado and Baumia governance is concerned, the evidence is in the results that we saw over the weekend. The mm. fact that even MPP members, not just members, MPP executives mm. went to the poll and as many as 40 MPs, mm. not just mere MPs, chairman of various committees mm. and vice chairman, lost because the people felt they were not giving them what they wanted. And I'm telling you that, Johnny, if the MPP implemented, for example, the one district, one factory correctly, mm. Mm. 
how many of these youth who are blaming the MPs for no jobs wouldn't have been employed in those factories? Many of them voted because they said the MPs couldn't give them jobs. Mm. Many of them voted because they said the MP, in fact, uh, Honorable Bafi and others, mm. the Maslock and people were happy talking about how they were giving jobs to people. Jobs that didn't come from the factories, though. Mm. So I'm saying that if they actually set up factories mm. like they promised, the MPs wouldn't have had to suffer for the, for the disappointment of, of the electorate. So for me, that is where we are now. As mm. for whether or not that disappointment of party executives mm. will lead to a general, you know, uh, uh, defection, mm. if you like, to the NDC, or it will lead to the benefit, electoral benefits of the NDC, it will also largely depend on how, as a party, okay. the NDC conducts itself on the ground. Mm. You are expecting but, people to defect to, to join you? I'm not talking about, uh, maybe I didn't use the correct <laughs> word. I'm talking about benefits, electoral okay. benefits. Right. Not, not necessarily that, defection. That it will swing in your the field. fact that people... Mm who are executives in the MPP are disappointed mm? mm. is not enough, I must admit, to conclude that because of that, automatically they will vote for the NDC. Mm. But what is, for me, a fact is that <laughs> they are disappointed in their government. Okay. But unfortunately, they are venting their anger on the poor MP mm. Who could have been saved if the executive, Nanado and Baumia, had performed better? Mm. The disappointment that they feel would have been less. Okay. But I'm saying that this disappointment, the NDC can harvest from that disappointment, mm. depending on how we also position ourselves. And I think so far, okay. our flag bearer, His Excellency John Dramani mm. Mahama, and the leadership of the NDC are working at that. And given the alternatives, especially given the track record okay. of your, our your, party, your, your flag bearer stance seems to have changed regarding the new register. Uh, he's asking for chiefs to beat Gong Gong for to ask for people to go and register that will go and register and and all of that. I will accept the verdict of the Supreme Court in the matter of EC versus NDC and all of that. What's changing his mind and the mind of the MPP NDC? One thing, one thing I always credit the NPP with is their effective propaganda machine. Really, what the flag bearer of the NDC said over the weekend is nothing different from what the NDC has been saying. The NDC didn't go to the Supreme Court to disrespect his decision. The NDC went to the Supreme Court to respect the decision that will come out of it. And so the mm. flag bearer says, we respect the decision. And you do know, Johnny, mm. that whether fresh elections, I mean, sorry, whether compilation of a new register, whether limited mm. registration, mm. or whether validation of already existing registration, mm. there will be a registration this year before elections. Not so. Okay. One of it is going to happen. But you are against the registration and compilation. Yes, but one election. registration will happen. Okay. One registration will happen before elections. It does appear that your flag bearer seems to be supporting now no. the concept of a new registration. No, our flag bearer is saying we respect the Supreme Court ruling. Okay. And so we will expect our party members to turn out and undertake or take part in any form of registration that will happen this year. Be it limited registration, mm. we want our people out. Mm. If at the end of the day, the Supreme Court rules that the EC cannot compile a new register, mm. the EC will have to do a limited registration right. for those who have turned 18. Mm. So our flag bearer is saying that whatever registration is going to take place, Come out and do I it. I thought that you had issues with COVID and you were saying that it was not good for people to congregate and blah, 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 all those words. Yes, we had issues with COVID. Do, have the issues changed? No, they haven't. But we are saying the Electoral Commission doesn't have issues with COVID. And the Electoral Commission says they will do registration whatsoever 
the means. Mm -hmm. So are you saying we should tell people not to take part? That would be irresponsible. We are saying that it is wrong for the Electoral Commission to do a compilation of a new register mm -hmm. that will expose more people to COVID. Mm -hmm. But you do know that the observations of the protocols will be much easier if the numbers of those, I mean, if the number of those who are expected to be registered mm -hmm. are fewer. Not so. Right. You can implement the protocols better mm -hmm. when you are expecting fewer numbers. So if you are going to do a limited registration exercise, mm -hmm. this, the risk is not the same as if you are going to do a, a whole registration, okay. a, a, a registration exercise for everybody. So you're saying that it's, it's misreported. Exactly. Because it's, been, it's not even misreported. It has been deliberately distorted by MPP math pieces. What do they want to achieve with that? Yeah, because they just want to create confusion in the minds of the people and present the NDC as an inconsistent party. Look at the newspapers that are doing that. They are the MPP mouthpieces that we know. The Daily Guys, the publishers. We know them. But clearly, what the former president said mm. is that there will be a registration exercise after the Supreme Court ruling. Mm. Whether limited registration exercise, whether validation of existing regis mm. uh, uh, registrants, or compilation of a new register, whatever be the case, mm. whatever the Supreme Court decides, we will respect it. That is not inconsistent with whatever position we have taken in, in the For past. example, the, uh, we will not accept a flawed, the results of a flawed election to us. That's also come up lately that y y your flag seems to be changing his mind. How? We will not accept a process of a flawed resource. Why? Did anybody, or does anybody expect anybody in this country to accept what is flawed? Since when? Did we expect people to accept what is flawed? So, stating the obvious mm. is now a crime. It's now, it's now unprofessional. Okay. What is happening to some people and their logic? Okay, thank you So, if it much. is flawed, we should accept it. Thank you. Um, we still do not have a, a rep of the uh, NPP here. It's, they have not attended upon us this morning, but your messages are ready. Um, let's hear it. It's an welcome back. Thank you, Jenny Hughes. President Ekufuado, it's a walking contradiction. How can he ask the police to arrest people for non wearing of masks but turn a blind eye to NPP members when there was a complete disregard for safety protocols in their just ended primaries? The president preaches virtue. But practices vice. Kofi said to sense that. Good morning, TV3. Please, are teachers supposed to put their nose or face marks on while teaching? Lambert well, course, sent yeah. that from Joapong in the Volta yes, region. Yes, <laughs> Musa Abatwa in Kumasi says, I don't get the head and tail of this logic why someone alone in his car with windows closed and air condition switched on to, to wear a nose mask. Who would the person likely to infect? With COVID-19 in such a situation, the fact that we should wear masks in public does not mean we should do so when we are alone. Good morning, Johnny. I want to use this opportunity to say good morning to Honorable Suhini that we appreciate the work they are doing for Mother Ghana. This is from Akilu. Good morning, Johnny. Talking about COVID-19 is not the same as work on it. How can we talk about social, uh, uh, social distancing in buses when the fuel prices keep going up and fares remain the same? What happened when world market prices went down? Please, let's face facts and stop burying our heads in the sun. Omar sends that from Dodowa. Hi, TV3. We need to check the mind of MPP and uh, the police people well. I don't understand why people being in private cars alone without max uh, and being arrested total madness jack good morning johnny even the security people especially the police finds it difficult to comply with the mandatory wearing of masks but let's see what the government of the day has to offer to the good people of ghana greetings to you and honorable suhini and that is from joe banye from wa hi johnny i wonder why since you started the campaign of social distancing in the states own buses. The government, particularly the transport ministry, hasn't done anything about it. Is it because their relatives do not board those buses that they are simply being insensitive to your call? Hmm. December 7 will speak for us. Greetings to Honorable Hassan Suhini and Honorable Christopher Bayer, uh, Kame, incoming MP for Tichiman South. Sir Mashud, sends that from Tichiman. Johnny, please highlight on the social distancing uh, being placed on the Okada riders that what is good for the goose is also good for the gander. Uh, Johnny, so no social distance is 
observed at Makola. No social distance is observed in government buses and other buses. Why then Okada? Please, this has given opportunity to policemen to go and arrest anyone with a pelion rider. If it's, uh, it happens this way, the officer changes you anyhow, uh, charges you anyhow he likes as if he's selling goods to you. Johnny, in fact, it's very bad to the Okada riders. Please, let's government do something about it quickly because the law enforcement is only in favor of the police department. This Okada rider is really pissed. <laughs> Let me take the very last one. Health workers and COVID-19 patients and their families are in serious battle in Sisala West District. All they always say is that they are lying to their relatives about the COVID-19. Could you imagine this? AG, Abu send that from Golu. Thank you very much. So, any fuel prices have gone up twice already, and uh, I've been I've been com, uh, concerned. I'm asking, uh, what is the bottom price, for example? Why is the MPA not talking? Um, we saw some six percent, uh, some some six percent thing come up uh, not so long ago. The cabinet decision. You drive, you buy the fuel. How do you feel? Well, I feel like uh, every Ghanaian who uh, uses fuel for whatever purpose. Mm. Uh, sometimes we tend to focus more on those who use it just for driving. But even those who have to pay transport fares, mm. uh, either for themselves or their goods, mm -hmm. are sometimes worse affected. You also have industry mm -hmm. who use it for production. Right. Uh, also heavily affected. Mm. So, like every Ghanaian, uh, fuel price increase, uh, you know, is not something that I am happy, uh, particularly, I'm particularly happy about. Mm. And I think it is especially sad that it is happening at this difficult time, that mm. many people have had to make, you know, uh, very difficult adjustments. Mm. And uh, we would have expected much better from our government instead of the increments in uh, some cases needless increment increments that's are leading to the burdens that we are suffering Global for example prices are dropping yes uh, that's so, the point i'm making so what is the point yes and we have always touted this automatic adjustment formula right especially when it leads to price increases but when it comes to price reductions it becomes disingenuous mm. for people in authority to begin to give uh, very unreasonable excuses mm. as to why the uh, adjustments is not automatic mm. when the prices are supposed to come down. I think it does not build confidence mm. in, the, in the populace and it must change. I mean, what has been said mm. to be justifiable in, for example, the increment in the boss margins, the over 100% increment in boss margins. It was a cabinet decision. Yes. So what has been set to justify but, but it? But government always tells us that they are not directly involved in the pricing of, of your um, petroleum products. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting a letter that says that they have directed boss yes. cabinet. Exactly. And that, that raised a lot of questions. Exactly. I don't know what you, what you from parliament think exactly. about it. I mean, no, what we are saying, what I'm saying is that, yes, the... Uh, ad adjustments at BOST have been made. Right. Not just mere adjustments, 100% adjustments in some cases, okay. which is a direct intervention of government in the way fuel is priced. Right. Because we say that, yes, there's an automatic adjustment formula, but government still has control over some of the components of the costs. Mm. And that's why some people in the past have said, for example, that the taxes that are on fuel mm. are controlled directly by government. So right. when government changes any of the tax components, it impacts negatively, uh, you know, uh, uh, or positively on fuel prices. Mm. And in this case, they have done that for, in the case of bust margins. Mm -hmm. And the question I am asking, and all of us should be asking, mm -hmm. is what is the justifiable reason? You tell me. There's none. There's none. The only one I see, which is not justifiable, by the way, is the fact that BOST has almost tripled its staff for what? For what? That's the question. For what? In about three years, apparatchiks have been packed there. In some cases, they don't even have seats at BOSS. Uh, you're, 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 uh, and I'm speaking on authority. I don't want to believe that. I'm speaking on authority. Just packed there. And so 
the company is unable to pay all these hangers on. And they have to burden you and I unnecessarily so they can take care of them. You're suggesting because that. even even with the increase in numbers, mm. they, they are, their margins, their profit margins, they are not even making profit. So you're suggesting that boss has padded its staff. Exactly. And it's part, passing on the cost to us. So the that cost of maintaining that staff to us. That's that, the only thing I see. That's a serious John, allegation. That is what I see. Because I do not, I cannot imagine what else will justify the increase in their margins. I can't. <sighs> should, should the MPA be talking? Of course, the MPA should also be what speaking. Do you, what do you want but to say? I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not be surprised if they say nothing. Because how can the MP, M, MPA, for example, speak against a cabinet directive? How? Because the MPA boss is an appointee of the president. But, and, they, are, but and, they are the regulator. So they should be able to say something. Protect the consumer. Really? Do you expect that to happen, especially under this vindictive government? Well, how do you mean vindictive? Well, you, 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 you are, we, um, just finished, we just finished talking about the NPP primaries and how some people have been taught a lesson. Oh, okay. We will continue to buy. Uh, maybe Suhini has free coupons. So we'll go and, I take, wish. Some, we'll go and take some of his free <laughs> coupons and then... Uh, but thank you very much. The MPP uh, this morning failed to attend upon us um, here, as has been the practice. I don't know why. We have not had any official communication from uh, the side of the MPP to say why they were not present here. But we do know that we extended an invitation to the MPP, as always, as we do. And they have the opportunity to present whoever uh, to, to make the debate fruit for Basuini. Uh, thank you. To, I just wish to, um, once again, I did that yesterday on another network, convey my heartfelt condolences to the family of a very, very good friend and brother, a pillar mm. uh, of mine in the constituency, uh, Ali Hudu Baba. Okay. Uh, he was uh, a nurse mm. uh, in Ward K, who uh, before maybe I came into politics, was not that uh, active mm. in, 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 in politics, but has become a pillar, mm. uh, not just politically, mm. but used also his health background to help a lot of people right. in our constituencies. He led mm. my, my almost all, all my health interventions and outreaches. Unfortunately, we lost him to um, a long uh, health disease yesterday so in the peace. morning. Mm. Uh, it's been devastating, not just for me, and I can only imagine how the family uh, is, is, is dealing with this loss. And we pray that uh, Almighty Allah will grant him Jannatul Firdaus. Inna ilahi wa inna ilahi wa inna Amen. We've been hardly hit in the constituency. Deepest and I pray God will give us the, 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 the serenity of mind to accept this loss. Deepest it's condolences and may he rest in peace. And may his family be comforted at this point. And that also reminds me, 10 years ago, a colleague of mine who uh, was my compatriot, my bandmate and uh, cadet compatriot and everything else, uh, Francis Cleland, knee not even the point all girl, he passed. And we'll be marking his 10th anniversary uh, over the weekend with <coughs> a solemn requiem mass. So uh, if you know him, we will share the details with you yeah. uh, as, as the days go by. But